We're speaking with Sam Slaughter, a member of the newly created Africa Mini Grid Developers Association, or AMDA. AMDA is the first dedicated trade association for mini grid developers focused on emerging markets in sub Saharan Africa, where more than 600 million people still lack access to electricity. It was launched with chapters in Kenya and Tanzania, but expects to expand throughout Africa in the coming months and years as it promotes the agenda of private utilities. Mr. Slaughter is also CEO and co founder of AMDA member PowerGen Renewable Energy, which has deployed over 40 microgrids in Kenya and Tanzania. AMDA currently has 12, sorry, 10 member companies, and more information about its members and mission can be found at africamda.org. Thanks for joining us today, Sam, from Nairobi. My pleasure to be here. Thanks so much, Will. So let's start by just getting the simple question out of the way. Uh, why was AMDA created? It's a great question and a good one to start with. Um, I think the, the couple of different factors weighed into the creation of AMDA. Um, First, we, as you know, have a ton of interest among the sector in solving this problem for the long term. And the players involved who want to solve for the long term think that microgrids are a great solution to do that. Um, over the last five years or so, a small but uh, very committed cohort of companies has been pushing the agenda of microgrids to solve the energy access problem. Um, and at this stage, there's now um, a good uh, dozen or so in East Africa who have, have, have had years of experience, have built sites, and um, we thought as a group it would be good to start bringing our uh, visions together and our agendas together so we could have um, more leverage in, in advancing what we think is a really important solution. So uh, there's 10 members of AMDA, as you mentioned. Um, all of us have had experience actually building and operating microgrids, and uh, now we're trying to collaborate further to, um, to further the, the, the mission. And by coming together to create that leverage, do you have specific objectives that you're looking to achieve? We do. Um, I think I think if you were going to boil it down in a, a simple way, there's two main objectives. First is to solve the energy access problem and connect 500 million people or more in Africa who don't have access to reliable energy. Um, and the second is to try to make sure that we build the energy system of the future in Africa, build the system of the 21st century, not the 20th. Um, our shared vision of the future is that the, uh, the future grid will look more like a distributed mesh network that involves uh, solar generation, distributed generation, embedded storage, and also smart metering and control systems that allow the whole thing to uh, uh, allow all these nodes to interact with each other. So something that look probably the future grid looks more like a, uh, a stock exchange, a network on which transactions happen between storage generation and consumption nodes and less like the current model which is more of a mono directional push of electrons so i think um our, our our dual goal is to solve energy access but to also make sure that as we do so africa converges on the future energy system uh the one that we see starting to emerge in places like california and germany uh and doesn't build the energy system of, of last century mm -hmm. and how are you going to do that well that's a great question i think um there's two main ideas we're going to be trying to advance with uh, AMDA um, to achieve those objectives. And the first is trying to push for regulatory frameworks that are uh, favorable and create an enabling environment for private utilities to operate. Um, the other thing we're going to be pushing on is creating the awareness uh, to drive increased financial um, support for the sector. So really you can group our, our initiatives into two buckets, regulatory and financial. Okay. And you used uh, the term private utilities quite a bit um, as opposed to mini grids or micro grids. Why is that? Yeah, I think microgrids has been a very convenient term to use and we've used it. It's in our, it's in our uh, association's name, uh, Africa Mini Grid Developers Association. However, um, we as a group tend to think that actually we, we defining our work a little bit more broadly. Um, a microgrid just describes a small utility that happens to be autonomous. Um, we think that that isn't the uniqueness that we bring and the value that we bring. In fact, anyone can really build a mini grid or a microgrid. Uh, public utilities can do that. The incumbent utilities can do that. Um, what's unique about what we're doing, the members of AMDA are doing, is we're trying to create a market for, um, for utilities that are not the incumbent public utility to operate. Whether, whether we operate autonomous microgrids 
or we operate grids that are connected to the main grid, um, either one of those situations work for us. The value that we bring is really more about first operating more efficiently uh, than the incumbent public grids. So, so getting do it, making more impact with less money. Uh, the second cause for us to exist is that we can be the conduit to bring innovation to these markets. And when I say innovation, I mean these components of the future smart grid, uh, distributed generation, distributed storage, smart metering and controls. Uh, and the final reason is, is we can offer enhanced customer service to our end users and help them make more use of the power once they get it. So uh, in that regard, a lot of, a lot of AMDA members are working on initiatives to, to promote demand stimulation on our grids, so things like appliance financing to help people get TVs, radios, refrigerators once they have power, and also encouraging uh, productive loads like uh, carpenter sawmills or or um, maize grinders and, and water pumps and things like that. So I think those are the, th the three main reasons we would anchor uh, to for, for why we need private utilities. We, we can be more efficient, uh, we can bring technology, and we can offer better customer service. Um, whether we build a microgrid or we're building some appendage to the existing grid um, is less important for our mission. That's a great answer. Thanks. And in terms of the future plans for AMDA, I know you've talked about expanding. <clears throat> but maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so right now it's two chapters, uh, Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, but the, the goal is to be pan-African. Uh, the goal is to create a unified vision for the African continent of what this future utility should look like and how private companies can help build it. Um, as of now, we have some initial funding support, um, and we are actively hiring for a global coordinator, which we hope will uh, allow us to, to move more quickly. Currently, we have no uh, actual dedicated staff, which is making it a little harder for us to, to, to move fast. So as, a, as if I can get away with a little plug here, we, we are looking for a global coordinator. Please check out our website for uh, more information about that, africamda.org. Um, so our hope is to get some, some people in place first and foremost to help uh, run the organization and then start pushing on our regulatory and uh, finance enabling uh, pillars. Great. We'll be sure to highlight that job opportunity in our upcoming newsletter, which, by the way, will be focused on mini grids. Um, Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. So uh, overall, I mean, you're talking about 500 million or more people in sub-Saharan Africa spread across 50 countries without access to any electricity. What really is the potential for mini grids in solving that electricity poverty um, problem? I, I've seen varying numbers. Um, I don't know that there are any good ones, but uh, as, as uh, a member of AMDA, what are the thoughts of the 10 companies currently uh, on the ground in terms of, <clears throat> you know, the role that mini grids can play? Great question. And I think you, uh, you mentioned in your question a really important point, which is that there is a lack of information uh, in our sector around what is the current situation on the ground. Uh, I think the most, the hardest information to get typically is where is the existing grid, uh, and and then where are the people. Um, there's been a few country by country studies done in this regard to to dig deep into this, but in general, it's there's a lack of information here, which makes it hard to answer this question analytically and rigorously. Um, that being said, I think AMDA members uh, are pretty optimistic that a vast majority of African consumers can be um, brought energy access with some form of microgrid. Or private utility, um, there are going to be a small minority of people who live in such sparse areas that uh, a grid system of any kind does not make sense for them. Um, that being said, the forces of, of urbanization taking place throughout the continent are certainly pushing demographics in the direction of grids being more, not less relevant. Um, it's important, though, when I say grids, that it doesn't it doesn't mean that we're advocating for the business as usual approach to building grids that we've seen in Africa over the last few decades. Um, in general, AMDA members are not proponents of building out very heavy uh, high voltage distribution networks throughout countries if it can be avoided. Rather, our, our approach is to emphasize lower voltage networks at the local level, taking advantage of supply and demand aggregation from small local grids, um, usually at a lower voltage, um, and then ultimately being able to interconnect those. It, this all fits into this future vision of the, uh, the grid looking a lot more like a mesh network of a lot of different generation consumption and storage nodes and having less need for these these large highways for power, or the heavy the high voltage transmission lines, and we can build lower cost, more resilient uh, power networks if we keep it 
uh, localized and distributed. So we are uh, there's there's important nuance here among what we mean when we say grid. And we think when we define grid the way that we do, um, a vast majority of African consumers can be served by the solution. So is that eighty percent, seventy percent? Would you hazard a guess? <laughs> I'll I'll go on I'll go on record I guess as saying eighty percent. Great. But yes, it's as I mentioned, there's a lack of analytical rigor behind such prognostications right now, unfortunately. All right, listeners, you heard it. We need some more rigorous <laughs> prognostication. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Sam. So uh, last question. So we're, I, I can't believe it, but we're almost coming up to 2018. Um, from an AMDA perspective, what are the three critical success factors for the mini grid sector next year? Great question. Um, so I think one of the thing, first things we did to pull together AMDA was to come up with eight principles that all AMDA members could agree on. Um, so we all had a unified agenda to start with. Uh, we've posted those eight principles on our website, africamda.org. Um, I think to highlight three, though, that um, we've been hearing as recurring themes amongst members the last few months. Um, the first is, is subsidy parity. Uh, this is an important idea that um, all throughout history, energy access and rural areas has been subsidized by, uh, usually by the host government, uh, the country in which it's going on. Um, it's important that even as we advance private sector solutions to energy access in Africa, that we don't turn our back on the, the public sector legacy of supporting this endeavor. Uh, if we don't accept uh, public funding and support into energy access in Africa, all that we're succeeding in doing is shifting the full burden of cost onto the most vulnerable rural people, which, if not morally questionable, would certainly be historically unique. So one thing that we're pushing for in our sector is not new subsidies for p private utilities, but rather to benefit from the subsidies that the public utilities already benefit from. So we're hoping that we can convince uh, large donors and the governments that they support that it's in their interest to, to subsidize not only their public utilities, which they currently do to a pretty extreme degree, make, but make that funding similarly available to private utilities to create a more multipolar power landscape. So that's the first point, subsidy parity. Uh, the second, I would say, is grid, grid integration frameworks. Um, you know, to the points made earlier, we really see ourselves as private utilities less than microgrid companies, and as such, we aren't trying to defend against or forever be isolated from the main grid. We see ourselves as building uh, essentially the basic unit of the future smart grid, these um, resilient, intelligently controlled nodes that include generation and storage and also consumption. Um, these, these assets are built to be integrated into the main grid, and we embrace that, but the policy isn't yet um, there to make this easy in most countries. So we need more clarity on policy for how we can integrate our grid, grids into the main grid. Um, I think the final thing that will be really important for us to push in 2018 is uh, creating a more uh, bankable and uh, financeable model for our assets. And that's going to require some level of increased standardization. Uh, it's going to require more data on how our users use power. We're not going to have power purchase agreements in our sector anytime soon. Instead, we're going to have thousands of data points about how much energy people use. We need to find a way to aggregate that data and to use it to prove to financiers that these projects are indeed bankable and start bringing in meaningful capital into the sector. Great. So to recap, that's parity and government support of private grids versus public grids. Um, yep. po better policy for grid integration uh, and uh, focusing on more financial support um, towards bankability. Exactly. Yep. I think those would be the three we, we might prioritize the most going into this year. But again, uh, we have a, a more complete list on our website of, of eight principles that AMDA members are, are hoping to advance in the years ahead. Great. Thank you so much, Sam. This has been really fascinating. Um, I hope that uh, Power for All um, is able to support you guys as you develop. We look forward to hopefully joining the campaign and um, we will be watching as AMDA develops and hopefully um, actually does deliver 80% uh, of the eventual connections to the 500 million people who need it. So thanks again. Thank you, Will. Really appreciate it.